unauthorized camping. Oh. Sit down there. I don't like the seat next to Eric because I feel like it's too close to the camera. Oh, okay. hmm. I thought that we're going to get personal here. <laughs> Denise already moved away from me. Now it's another person. It's like, okay, there's something wrong. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, get started here. So, first, I just want to go over the agenda bill. Um, this is um, the fourth time this is in front of the council. And it's the fifth, if you count, that when we had a council meeting last week, we did receive a lot of comments on this topic at public recognition. And so this started back um, on June 26th. We met again on the 5th for public comment. Um, we received a comment. We talked about it at another study session on the 12th, and now we're back at the, the, the fourth study session in July. Um, and again, this is one of your goals. Um, for this year is to come up with a new ordinance um, for this section of our code. And this is the work that we're doing to, to get that um, underway. So um, I, I put down like what I see is the questions that the council needs to consider to kind of start moving this forward. Uh, the last time we discussed um, whether there was going to be an a repeal or an amendment, and it appeared that um, the council, a majority of the council, were going forward with an amendment, which I think was consistent maybe with the goals that had been set at the outset. Um, so, taking the lead from there, the first question is whether the council wants to see any limitation on camping on public property, even when there's no shelter space available. Mm -hmm. And so, what that means is that um, there would be um, a time restriction or a place restriction that was in place uh, regardless of whether there was shelter space available. That was something that the Ninth Circuit said it was allowed. Um, and many municipalities have taken that route and, and set up uh, ordinances that have those limitations. Um, if the council does not want to do that, um, does not want to have any limitations, um, they could the council could just amend the code to restrict enforcement of the existing ordinance. Our existing ordinance says no camping anywhere, anytime, and restrict enforcement of that code um, to times when shelter space is available. Meaning when there's shelter space available, there's a restriction everywhere, all the time, it's not allowed at all. Um, but when shelter space is not available, um, that is not going to be enforced. And so that type of amendment is what uh, Port Richard and Paul spoke about. Um, and so the, uh, so I see that as kind of an initial consideration. Most places um, it appears have that um, as a feature of their code. Their codes kind of started out like ours where it says no campaign anytime. They added that, but then they go on to additionally list some restrictions um, on, Camping, even when there is no shelter space available. So, see that those as being some of like the threshold questions. Um, if you decide to go with um, having some limitations that are in place, even when shelter space is unavailable, then we need to decide what those are going to be, right? Um, we prepared some additional material for your consideration. So, you don't have the same packet again, over and over again, like you have before, just like you new stuff. Um, what uh, Michael prepared was uh, a review of uh, other ordinances and the ones we've looked at previously. And then he kind of did um, a verbal review as well as a table form. Um, and so hopefully catching our kind of visual and our um, kind of more narrative type learners there, um, it gives you some ideas of what other communities in the Puget Sound in Washington are doing. Um, both, as we've discussed before, um, there tends to be limitations on places. Sometimes there's limitations on times, and some have included um, manner limitations. We didn't get into those in the table. They um, they tend to be like about fires. Uh, you might see in the news sometimes um, encampments um, have been the source of, of fires, particularly if they're in like wooded areas or um, in some places have restricted uh, like the use of propane stoves and that kind of thing. So 
what we attached is um, a draft ordinance like the ordinance passed by the Lakewood City Council. That was the one that seemed to have interest in most of the council, but it is modified. We took out everything that was Lakewood um, specific in the whereases, but I didn't add in Bremerton specific ones at this time. Um, those would be added to a final draft, but I really, at this point, we kind of need to focus on those questions of what the limitations are going to be or if we're even going to have them. Um, and we can figure out who we're as is forward at, at, at another time. Um, but this gave you an idea of what Lakewood like, would look like. It's definitely a draft. I wanted that to be very clear. And so I didn't mean to be I think it's somewhat obnoxious about explaining how, how draft like this draft is because I didn't want people to get out, um, see it, and be like, oh, this is what the city of Bremerton is doing. Um, this isn't a normal process for. Um, a code amendment is being presented to the council and it's at least from the administration's perspective, a final form. This is something that um, I am assisting the council on drafting and it's um, very draft-like and you'll see it when you read it because there are sections where we have things that look redundant, but it's how different cities have defined certain terms. And so we put both definitions in there so that you can see the wording um, both ways. Obviously you're not gonna do both of them. Um, and that's like on the definition I think of um, like public or shelter space available space. overnight shelter. shelter. Yeah, I'm different um, different definitions there. Some cities use protected waters. There was also critical areas instead. Um, and so this was just to sort of put um, into paper and get start um, start looking at what it's going to look like for Bremerton. Um, and so I um, have Michael here and. Um, to give you guys a heads up, I'm not going to be here at the meeting next week. He's going to be covering for me, which is also a big part of why he's here tonight. So he'll be taking your input and, um, you know, getting things ready for, for you for next week. Um, if we decide to go to council, I don't know where this is going to lead, if we're going to end up with another study session or, or whatnot, or if we're going to just um, have something ready for you to go. So um, with that, if, if you guys have questions about, um, what we provided, particularly the, the notes regarding camping ordinances, the table, the ordinance, um, that's we're here to answer them and if we find out um, what you guys would like to see. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then uh, timeline is certainly if we have a strong consensus tonight, we could, could do it next week. Yeah, yeah, I don't have to be here. Mm -hmm. um, my plan is to appear by Zoom, um, but I do, Michael is going to be in presence. Um, uh, in person covering the meeting um, just in case I have connected in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we need an extra study session to keep sure, through, I'll, yeah. Yep. But I'll, I'll be sure, back on the way. Sure, I speak for everyone. We don't want to be at this forever. Um, perfect. So, yes, yeah, so, so I guess we're looking for suggestions um, of to add areas that people might want us to be off limits all the time. Um, and uh, I'll make sure I got that right away looking for counsel. Sure. We'll yeah, I think. Yeah, clarification. Yeah. So I think you said that some areas are camping you know, is still prohibited. Like, did you say that so, in parks? So, um, like our watershed has protection. And Michael actually has some more information on the yeah. areas of our code that are currently protected under different sections of our code. One of the, I guess, um, what I would say is challenges with that is that. We do have a camping ordinance on the book and it's pretty obvious that we're looking at this and we always want to it, it, this is the one that people would look at of what what code section fits for this situation um and so if if it's if the thought is well we aren't going to have those areas off limits because we have this other section code i would probably want to at least address that in our whereas it's so that it's conscious it's i guess noted yeah and the reason I say that too is that there's a different enforcement scheme under the other code. Um, they go criminal immediately. Um, our camping code does not. Um, and so a violation of, of some of those other sections is, um, in, you know, immediately a misdemeanor we're under our camping code. I think it's the third um, violation um, after a, two citations. Um, but all of that is up for course amendment. Um, but it's, I guess what I would say is there are protections for other um, areas on the books elsewhere in the code, but 
um, when it comes to really enforcing that and when it, the specific behavior is um, camping, it, it, it really makes sense to try to figure out where the council is on camping. Um, and, and, and if it's that you are comfortable with those other codes for taking it, and I would probably just want to acknowledge that somehow. Any other reaction? Plus three, three or more. more. Three or more. Three or more infractions within a two year period. Well, if you're ready, um, I'm ready to critique this ordinance. This is the building block. I tell you what I like and what I don't sure, like Mike, about it. <laughs> Perfect. And then, with the understanding that other people may not be on the same page. Sure. But uh, first of all, what I like about it, I like the wetland section. So I would leave that in critical areas. Basically, no camping. The and this is based on a lot of the public testimony that. Out of the, the main hearing that we had where we had the residents at MLK and then we had people representing uh, the unsheltered down at MLK and I'm balancing the concerns and also what I believe are the basic necessities of treating someone like a human being and that's where I'm coming from here. So this uh, first of all this business about uh, you can't enforce the ordinance if there's no shelter space available. I'm definitely good with that. With the provision that I don't want it to open up, that means you can camp anywhere that's public space. That's what this implies, except for the critical areas. Right. Now, I don't like that. Okay. What, what I'm suggesting is that there is a dedicated area, whether it's one, two, three, or four, I don't know within the city that we say this is okay for camping. That way the residents, in, and in this case on MLK way, they're not camping out on the sidewalk. So there is a dedicated space. What I'm having a problem with is your unauthorized storage and the business about you can't camp, you have to leave camp after nine, uh, between 6.30 and 9.30 p.m. you gotta vacate. So well, let's say I'm down on my luck. All my possessions are on my back, my tent, whatnot. And you're telling me I have to get up by 6.30, clear my campsite. I have to carry all my possessions with me while I go look for work, while I go see services? No, I don't think so. What do they do at shelters? Do they require you to pack up and leave? Or is there, my understanding is sometimes they have places where you can have a locker and you lock your stuff up so you can go to your appointments and your treatment and try to get a job and try to get ahead. This is cruel. And I'm not trying, I'm not, you guys are just going with this, so, but just let me voice my frustration. That's cruel. Okay. So again, I'm trying to balance it. I want people, first of all, if uh, everybody in the community uh, does your job, we should have adequate shelter space. If not, then it's plan B, we allow public camping in certain dedicated areas. It doesn't have to be all within the city of Bremerton. This is more than what's in the city of Bremerton. This is, as far as I'm concerned, throughout Kitsap County, it's a Kitsap County wide thing. If, if Bainbridge Island doesn't have any provisions, any shelters, I can guarantee you there's people from Bainbridge Island or down here experiencing homelessness because this is where so it should be a Kitsap County wide effort dedicated spaces and and so I wouldn't limit the hours so if I mean there's I'm not guaranteeing their security but their belongings they don't have to pick up at 6 30 in the morning and it, that's not realistic I also think there's complaints about sanitation Obviously, if you allow camping anywhere within the city, we can't have porta potties everywhere in the city. But if you have dedicated spaces, we can give people. I'm not saying, you know, this is the Motel Six. I'm saying a porta potty and some running water, for God's sake, so you can wash up while you go to your appointments and get your interview. Just the basic necessities. And again, the city is not on the hook for this. If we ensure that there are, and according to this ordinance, I'm okay with it, 
shelters within a 15 mile area. Maybe we want to tighten. I think that might be a little unrealistic 15 miles. Maybe we want to tighten that circle. It says from the, from the city of downtown city of Bremerton or city hall. I'm okay with that. But the other thing is we have to transport them over to there. And here's where I get into, this is a Kitsap wide county problem. I've been thinking about this. It's a Kitsap wide problem. Kitsap Transit, the board is all the represented, uh, they're all elected officials. <clears throat> we can make it a priority with Kitsap Transit that wherever these uh, shelters are, wherever these dedicated camping spaces are, that there's shuttle service so they can go to their, go to their appointments or whatnot. We can make it a priority because we're all sitting on, on board. That's where I'm getting at. Let's give these people a chance to get out of the situation they're in. And I just don't think the way this ordinance is written that it's realistic. You're just beating these people down. You're just beating them down. So um, I'm not good with the ordinance. So if you tweak it the way I just stated, uh, again, I want to hear public testimony. But I think it's an, a good balance. And just just to be clear, uh -huh. I did it off that Lakewood ordinance. Oh, I know. I, not, this is certainly uh, not my ordinance. I know. And it's a starting <laughs> point. We need to have right. a talking point. And, right. and based on the examples, I looked at the, no one has what I just described based on those examples. So the time limit limitation or the. Yeah, throwing that out. And just what I described, does one of the cities have what I just described? Basically a tent city. See, no, but be careful on the small, city. Sorry, you, you, here's the deal on that, though. If the city does its job and we have adequate shelter, I should say if the county does its job and we have adequate shelter space, there is no tent city. Okay? So I've been spending time in the, my YouTube algorithm now is, guess what I get on my YouTube channels, right? So I don't know if it's successful or not, but San Diego, if you Google that one, they have this thing. You know, this is this. This, I really don't want to go down this road, but I think we have to. They, they actually have um, shelters. They're basically all the same kind of tents. I know our climate's different and all that stuff. But um, again, if they're, they're only utilized, emergency level only, as an outlet, a relief valve, if there's a lack of shelter space. If we have enough shelter space, they're not used. And then there's no camping anywhere within your city limits. And I think this ordinance, whatever we adopt, should be countywide. And don't tell me that's not realistic because on this council, I remember, and I don't want to equate one over the other, but um, Kids in Main Society said, you know, our rules are really difficult when each jurisdiction has different rules for animal control. We need to have countywide rules. And guess what, we passed countywide. We could have a countywide ordinance on addressing camping and have these relief valves um, put in place and hopefully they're never used. We know that they probably will be until the, the uh, capacity increases, but unless someone can convince me otherwise, that's, I'm kind of dug in. Just keep going around here, other thoughts on the, yeah, and again, to clarify the majority of council last time, directed attorneys to draft based on the Lakewood ordinance. So that's, what, that's what's come back to us, um, is based on Lakewood. Um, any other comments from council? Yeah, Denise. Um, you know, I, I see uh, uh, this element as part of a, a whole continuum around housing. And I would like to think that if we had adequate shelter available, emergency shelter, low barrier, no barrier shelter, that there would be no people that would choose to live on the street. But I don't believe that's true. For whatever reason, um, whether it's their issues that they're fighting with or their, their history with certain agencies, whatever it is, um, 
the, the very edge of the continuum. That's what we're dealing with right now, I believe. And when we talk about affordable housing, it's in that continuum too, but that's why people have been screaming. Affordable housing isn't the answer to this particular issue because it's a different population. It's a different demographic. They can shift, right? And I am so encouraged when I hear um, Councilman Younger talk about this. Um, because I think all of this council believes in a basic level of human dignity. And so, yes, definitely when other shelter isn't uh, uh, available, there's still going to be a need for what you're talking about. And that might not even be attractive to a certain element of people. So whatever, but it does, I believe that what Councilman Younger is talking about, designating spaces, serves, best serves the community that we're talking about and making sure that they have that full continuum of services is something I think that we can insist on, whether it's county or city. Um, and so that's why I'm always interested in, wait a minute, why are we considering this when we, we know that we're losing, you know, Kids Up Rescue Mission uh, when they're moving into the new shelter and and uh, uh, that's now in the Quality Inn here in Bremerton, um, moving to Port Orchard, and yet I think um, administration is doing a lot of work that we're not even aware of on this. And I I do believe that the mayor, when he when he tells us that he's working on making sure that shelter we we maintain our shelter space don't lose that right but what councilman younger is talking about is really the first solution i've heard of to long-term services uh of a more permanent doesn't have to be permanent permanent but you know what i mean it's there and if we have to pay somebody to run it with the county, so be it. But the service, the lack of services is what I'm most concerned about. And then that the A word, or excuse me, the, the E word, enforceability. How is whatever we introduce going to be enforced? Is it gonna be enforced? Because I hear we'll enforce everything, anything council, says we have and then i hear at the next meeting about fireworks that's not enforceable to that full extent because we've got more private okay i'm getting a grasp of all that i'm always going to put domestic violence first um having said that we need an ordinance that will be a tool for our police department to use to protect those citizens that Councilman Younger was referring to. And um, I, it has to be services and enforcement. And so um, actually before I would support anything, I want to get assurance from the administration that we're on this. And by the time we pass something like this, we're not gonna be at a lower capacity than we were when we first started talking about it. We need to increase capacity. And I, I was one of those people that said the county doesn't do enough. The county doesn't do enough. What I'm saying tonight is that the county, yes, the county has a responsibility. I don't necessarily want to check from them to deliver services in Bremerton. You know, I would like to see these kinds of facilities all throughout the county so that people who are really on hard times have a place like that to have safe and, and humane shelter, even if it's in their own town. So can I start asking all that? Because I know this is a, a, a huge um, umbrella of, of dealing with, with homelessness. And we're, you know, as Attorney Fennell presented before, the small small piece. Um, so out of, all, out of all that, was there a specific suggestion for for crafting the ordinance i just want to make sure that wasn't lost i agree that we need protected uh areas 
uh, very strongly. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Um, I I do like the the idea of protected areas for the homeless as well. And that's a hard, lot harder to enforce when it's spread out all over rather than having a place for them to, to camp more safely. Um, that's where I am with it. So yeah, I would be for it with the, with the services. Oh, no, I just wanna make sure everything's, everything's clear. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna quickly recap what I said at the last study session, which is I'm in the minority. I think we should repeal this ordinance and then work on uh, drafting a better one. But I, I know I'm outvoted on that. Um, the second thing I'm gonna repeat is that the audit committee has been looking at potential parcels. They haven't been vetted by the department heads, but one parcel that I mentioned two weeks ago is immediately behind the Chevron station on Oyster Bay Avenue. Um, it's between the Chevron station and Public Works, and that's an area that Public Works plans to expand northwards into um, when funds become available and after the sewer under Oyster Bay Avenue are, are constructed. Okay, okay. Um, that is a possible location for a pallet city. Um, I've brought these up again, places that are, they have a proper roof, they have insulation, they have heat, they have AC, they have smoke detectors, um, they have electricity, obviously. Um, and these are typically grouped around a single central facility that has toilet, you know, that has plumbing, which is, you know, uh, plumbing, toilets, laundry, um, showers. Um, this would require somebody to maintain that, but this is a strategy that has worked in the past and Tony Ives of KCR has recommended this. Go ahead, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get some The lights are, yeah. I look good in the dark. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that I was thinking about today is, um, do you remember when the woman was raped in the elevator at the parking garage. We are paying $100,000 a year for two security guards to cover the three parking garages that the city owns. Would it not perhaps be possible to pull them over to Martin Luther King Way until the Blake fix kicks in on August 14th and the actual criminals who are preying on, I'm coming right back to the order. Yeah, I don't know, I was yeah. getting a little undermined. Um, yeah, so that's one possibility. I think in this ordinance, um, the thousand mm. dollar, it, it's just completely out of whack. Um, I mean, if you're going to be assessing somebody a fine, but it, it, if you're homeless, you don't have a thousand dollars. I echo Councillor Younger's um, statement because it's like when you are living rough, keeping an eye on your stuff, keeping your stuff together, schlepping your stuff from one place to the next, it takes up, it takes up a lot of time. Um, I think these are things that we can fix um, to create a temporary shelter. And I think that's the most urgent need. Um, the, the, the time, the, the time part of this, I think is, no, because you can't just break down your home every morning and then you know put it up again. Um, yeah, um, the normal thing of yeah, you're not gonna camp, you're not gonna have camping areas that are near wetlands or streams or steep slopes or aquifer recharge areas. I mean that just makes sense. I mean you don't want to have like trespassers there. That's you know. Um, Ukraine was able to do this like in the middle of bombing. They were able to put up camps that had Wi-Fi and heat and everything. And I think we can too. And I think that's more important than this ordinance, but I have no other specific comments on this ordinance. So I'm stopping. All right. 
my fault. Or, okay, do you want to? Just so I can jump in, um, not to address every comment that you made, uh, Councilor Mockler, but I did want to talk about the the violation section that you referenced. Again, this came from the language ordinance. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to explain, it's not a thousand dollar fine. It's a, a fine of not more than a thousand dollars. And that's typical for misdemeanors. They're generally 90 days in jail, a thousand dollar fine. That's the, the typical uh, limits, upper limits on misdemeanors. The, the, the thing that was unusual about Lakewood is that um, if you note at the bottom, it says um, the third, so for the city of Bremerton's current ordinance, the, the first two offenses I think are infractions. Versus three. Yeah. So we have we start with infractions. We don't start with with um, three or yeah. Yeah. Um, Lakewood started with criminal violations, and on the third one, it was um, a, min a minimum of five hundred and five days. But they did note, consistent with a, a se separate court decision, mm -hmm. Lozino, that um, the court shall make an inquiry as to the person's ability to pay. Person is unable to pay the monetary penalty set forth in one, two, or three. The court is explicitly authorized to order community service. So I'm just letting you know um, that the thousand dollars is not um, a thousand dollar fine. The court could certainly impose zero, except if it's on three and uh, under subsection three, then they need to make it for. I said I had stopped stop talking, so I shall. <laughs> Michael. Um, <coughs> so, um, actually uh agree i think with everything that eric said um and i like the idea of at least trying some designated spots i think uh council president last time did mention that 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 sort of establishing tent cities was not a recommended possibility but i i don't know anyways it, it, it's something that i would be following and then I, it's great ideas and, and, and needs to do stuff and <clears throat> but is not part of what we're trying to do tonight. Um, I like <clears throat> that, kind of, excuse me, the kind of wetland kind of stuff. Somebody recently mentioned that somebody was sleeping in like a culvert under, um, I guess that's Kitsap Way is my understanding. Big fish. And, and that could be that could be dangerous Very also deep. if something happened with tides or water or things like that. So there's two reasons. One, obviously water supplies and, and protected areas, Home but also flashes. some places can be yeah. dangerous. So I like that. Um, I kind of had brought up the, an idea of uh, maybe also kind of following what we might to put in a liquor store, um, maybe a certain, a certain amount of distance from schools playgrounds that kind of stuff because we we know that there is drug activity sometimes not everybody but it does happen there and we also have a population with mental health issues also so when we talk about vulnerable people and protecting vulnerable people i think we could follow maybe a model that looks looks like that and then just you know create a, a little bit of distance i'm not you know uh, i'm not sure if that's would make a difference or not then but kind of back to how do we deal with moving forward with this and some of these ideas and by the way Anna I was thinking of that exact lot in my head up behind the chevron um and um but we could write this and it could say like if no designated camping areas are available or shelter beds mm -hmm. then this is not enforced right so we could kind of build in that it's going to take a while to put something together um and um uh so wherever it might be or maybe in a couple places and yeah and it probably i will say on the security idea it probably needs a different type of security than our our folks that are downtown we're going to need probably a commitment from police and fire and maybe to do some wellness checks and you know we know that the porta potties have been a problem there which has been the hold back on us getting them not there but we have done the porta potties before and there's been they've been problematic and then that's why we can't get service uh, on them so i think that unless you have a question about what i'm saying okay so i think i'm i think i think i said what i wanted to say so but basically like it i really 
you know, there's, there's a nice idea behind, oh, and they'll just put away their things. And, you know, we won't see them during the day. It's just, that's, it's, it's wrong. It, we can't do that. Um, and, um, yeah, I think that it needs to be, we can't put them out somewhere on um, Warner Road or something like that. You know, that they have to be near some transportation or we have to provide some transportation. There should be some sort of security. I mean, yeah, like I, I, I like these tiny home areas and things like that. I'd love to see us do that. And that could be something that people could also kind of check into. But I think we need multiple communities because I think that there's going to be tensions and people might not want to deal with other, you know, people in the community. We probably all don't want to live together. So we need some options. That's can all I, I have. Can I say something to build on Michael's comments? Let me just check if Quinn had anything. I, I do, but Eric, go ahead. So I like Michael's suggestion that said that this no camping ordinance is not enforceable if there are no sheltered spaces or designated camping spaces. And so that's going to, doesn't have to be codified the exact locations in an ordinance. I suggest you don't. That's the administration to determine where designated camping spaces are, but we'll have to add a definition in your or in our ordinance to what is a designated camping space. So I like that part very much. So when a homeowner, a resident, calls the city and says, I got people camping uh, on my sidewalk. What are you going to do about it? Well, the city can do something about it. Instead of throwing their hands up and says, oh, you know, it's a sign of the times we're trying our best, whatever. No, city, you can come up with a designated camping space and then that person can have a place to go. So it's really on the city to do something. So I, I like that a lot. There was another thing that you mentioned, but I'm having one of those moments. So yeah. uh, I'll, I'll let Quinn take for a Go over to you, Quinn. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with a lot of what's being said. Um, I think the biggest thing that this discussion should be leading us towards is how to fund shelters, right? How to fund making sure that beds are beds are happening. I think the balance is. Well, until that happens, what neighborhoods, what streets, what areas are um, absorbing the brunt of the social issue that is houselessness? Um, and so I'm split between a couple of thoughts. The first being, if we are going to do a designated space area, I think we need to do it equitably and choose a space in every single district. Um, that kind of cuts against though, putting resources in a certain area. Um, so I'm not sure how we decide what areas are gonna be those designated spaces. It sounds like the council so far believes that a time restriction would be inhumane um, because people would have to pack up their belongings every single day. I'm leaning towards that as well. Um, but I, I think hunting the issue isn't the best idea that we could do. Um, I, I think we need to, if we're actually going to come up with space requirements, we need to come up with those as a council. Um, and, and not just punt it to the administration. Um, with the administration's guidance and Attorney Fennell's guidance as far as liability issues that surround those, you know, there's there's a hat that I'm wearing as a council member, but I also know that there are liability issues. And, and maybe that's my question for City Attorney Fennell. If we do do space designations without time restrictions and basically say, hey, here's a city plot where you're able to camp 24 seven. What is a liability requirement that we would need to provide safety or any other sort of um, services there based sure. on that designation? So um, what I'm gonna go over with you is um, some information I received on that issue from our uh, the risk pool. They um, provide insurance, of course, for 
hundreds of entities in the state, and some of which operate um, tiny house villages, tent cities, that kind of thing. And um, this is sort of their checklist of uh, things that they are looking for in the people they insure. Um, I'm not saying that all these things have to be addressed, but it's something that they want to know whether or not we are doing these things. And so first, it's been discussed, water and sanitation. Um, prevention of fires, such as fire extinguishers and sprinklers and any uh, structures that are constructed. Um, a source of outdoor heat, um, or, or a source for heat for outdoor mitigation sites, um, and how is that provided. Um, public safety within the encampment or shelter, and I think that it's usually like an attendant or security guard type person who's on site. Um, controlled access, um, often they are fenced in areas so that the people in there um, feel safe and it keeps out people who are not um, living there. Um, so it provides security um, as, as well as um, who can enter um, the facility. They also had, uh, whether there's a exit and egress plan in case of fire or emergency, that, that is uh, the residents are informed and that you have um, basically a plan in place for people to evacuate, like you do for buildings, you know, for employees and things like that. Um, emergency accessibility for fire, medical, and police that um, needs to be accessible. Uh, a code of conduct and rules for behavior. Um, they want to see a copy of that if we do have that. Um, written acknowledgments or agreements for behaviors. Um, something like that. And also like, how are those enforced? Is it self-policing? Is it done by um, some sort of outside agency that might be a partner? Um, and the allowing animals in them um, at the mitigation site, whether that's allowed or not allowed. Um, if you do, do you require that they be on leash? If you comment, or is it only service animals? Um, a plan that addresses the accommodation of special needs, such as handicap accessibility, and whether or not tents are kept off the ground um, using pallets or something else. Is there a contact or something for excess personal property, either on site, off site, secured or unsecured? How are they going to access? Who's going to secure it? That kind of thing. Um, a plan to address the presence of rodents regarding food, garbage. Um, whether you'll have a contractor for that purpose at the site, uh, whether you plan to screen for sex offenders, um, and whether it be refusal of entry or segregation, um, if a person sex offending, and whether it will be um, a, a low barrier entry model, meaning there's no requirement to be drug free or sober upon entry, and how will that be screened for, and if there will be any like. Uh, behavioral health navigators to serve them, uh, folks at that, um, and kind of like just understanding what that person is going to be providing care. Like, is, are they, um, what is the relationship to the people who live there? Um, and so that was, those were some of the questions that they asked. So um, there's a lot to think about to, to set one of these types up. It's not um, a, uh, it, it involves more than just finding the place. So they, they need to be, have services there. And there's a lot of considerations, but they're certainly not unable to be overcome. Everyone says it. It just gives you an idea of what other cities have had, like the, the things that they have needed to um, address and set these things up. Thank you for that. And I also, it's been a while since I've done housing discrimination, but I also believe some HUD laws, some federal laws would attach as well. Um, if I, I believe shelters ask people to leave so that they don't become landlords and, and have HUD laws or federal housing laws attached to them. If, if we were to do that, I'm assuming some federal laws around housing would also attach. Is that your understanding as well? I don't know specifically on HUD laws, whether they're applicable to um, tent sites. They could be, I could look into that. I mean, obviously just with reading it, um, this 
you know, their concerns, there's ADA issues, so that's federal law, right? Um, if it's, uh, HUD attaches, I know, the service animal requirement to housing and that kind of thing. And so um, I, I'm guessing it's certainly something we would need to look into because there's some other requirements as well. So thanks for that. So that was, your your answer was kind of confirm my suspicions that basically if we were going to designate a place without other restrictions like time restrictions we basically the city of bremerton would be becoming a landlord um with all the liability that attaches there um, there definitely be some liability i mean I, I would you know landlords a specific legal term as you know under rcw so i would say we would certainly be taking on responsibilities um because we would be providing um a, a site for a specific purpose and so there's going to be um uh, responsibilities attached to that right we would be basically granting a license not like contracting with individuals I, this is where i think we need to be funding nonprofits that know these laws in and out that can provide the services in the best way possible i, I think i think we need to be putting our money towards some private public partnerships and focusing on you know hopefully we'll we'll continue with the audit committee's assessment of what land could possibly be used but i i hope everybody heard this exhaustive list or non-exhaustive list of issues that need to be considered as we go through this so um i i, I think i'm against just designating certain areas uh without thinking through all of the ramifications um that go along with it i, I think that it's a lot more complicated than folks are making it seem to be. I'll take my round here and go around too. Um, yeah, it's like, like, sorry, great discussion so far. Um, same, I'll start big and then kind of narrow down a specific ordinance. Um, I think echoing everybody here, I'm so supportive of services of folks who need it. I mean, I look at Pendleton Place as the, the prime example you have permanent housing, you have on-site services, you have support, that's that's 72 beds in Bremerton um, that just went live you know, the other year. Um, that is to me the gold standard and all the experts find a way to um, to really help people long-term. And I, I wanna see Bremerton do its part. I've also spoken about how we're 70% we're of the county's population, by the latest point in time survey, we have 60% of um, unsheltered folks here. So we are, um, we're already doing more than our fair share and we're the poorest per capita. So I know our service is limited and um, we're dealing with what I think is a failure at the national level for treating mental illness and the state and national level for addressing homelessness, um, you know, countrywide. Um, that said, going back to council member Goodnow's statement, um, yeah, the, the book I was reading, um, you know, made a difference between um, regulated encampments and unregulated encampments. And what it recommended against was unregulated encampments um honestly kind of like we see right now in an okay way and some other parts of the city um certainly if you have a, a regulated encampment with support and services that's getting closer to a pen place type uh, model um but when you do the unregulated encampments and, and either encourage or allow those to form um then you get the negatives uh, associated with it that's just a lose lose for the folks experiencing housing for uh, the community and all of that um I think it was a great comment about uh, is there some percentage of the population that may never take shelter spaces available, even a penalty in place? Absolutely, I can't tell you what percentage it is. I think that's always gonna gonna be there. And I do I do worry about what if we never have enough shelter space um, in Bremerton? Hopefully, we'll get there. But um, I think it's something we need to think about. So, going back to the ordinance, when we're asked to weigh in on. Um, I, I do think we do need to carve out um, time or space restrictions. I agree the time one I think is tricky to enforce. Um, the only pro to that is, is it does prevent um, the unregulated encampments from forming if folks are you know, having to move back and forth, but I do know what a burden that would be on somebody to constantly pack up and move every single day. Um, so I, I, I know that's a, that is a tough one. Um, what I was reading some other codes, this is what I'll propose, and I think it jives maybe with some other comments. Um, 
is that we do have on the code the ability for nonprofits to create um, basically um, regulated uh, spaces, call them encampments or just regulated areas for, for folks to, to be at. Um, I might propose some sort of buffer, um, say like 500 feet from any park, playground, community facility or school. Um, and that would be enforced at all times, whether there would or wouldn't be shelter space. Um, happy to, you know, amend that one or, or discuss it more, but I think carving out, um, in addition to the environmental areas, some other areas of concern um, that would be off limits, uh, whether there's shelter space or not. Um, and then, of course, you know, outside this ordinance, making sure that we have those community partnerships to, uh, so let's say specifically, no matter what, that would still leave a lot of room where camping is allowed when there's no shelter space. Um, and then at the same time, work on the resources for um, having the supportive places. So I guess when we go into round two, um, do we want to quickly recap as far as the ordinance goes, what some specific suggestions are and see if we have um, consensus on some of them? I'm just going to look around the table here. Um, I'm just see, yeah, I'm good with like what I've, everything that I've kind of heard. I, don't, I haven't heard a lot of contradictory yeah. ideas. So I, I'd like to address, um, and I think they're extremely valid points that our two attorneys brought up uh, regarding to feasibility, whether this is a pie in the sky idea. The first thing I want to say is by doing nothing, sooner or later, and again, my darn YouTube algorithm points me at all these cases. Uh, Portland's a fascinating example where you had people up to recently were like, uh, you know, very uh, pro houselessness advocates, and then they want to sell their house or it really affects their neighborhood. And now people are threatening to sue the city for nuisance properties because in public spaces. So by doing nothing, the city is opening themselves up to liability as well. So we can't just sit on our hands and do nothing. That business model is going away. We have to do something. I do agree um, that we, because of the resource limitation, whether it's contracted or it's city, and believe me, I prefer to contract with a, with a private entity or a nonprofit, but I don't see a lot of nonprofits chomping at the bit saying, hey, let me, so let's be real, realistic here. We're, we're in, in this business about this should be done at the national or state level. Totally agree. But guess what? I have no control over that. I have control over this. I'm one of seven. I have control over this. Okay. So as far as I'm concerned, the buck stops here. It's time to do something. Um, all the litany of lists are just su suggested best practices. I don't believe the insurance pool says we have to do every. You didn't say they did. We have to do all one of these things. These are just things to look at. We had public testimony. We had letters written in uh, for houseless advocates that were saying, yes, we want rules enforced. We want people that are breaking the law to be prosecuted. So I suggest... Um, and, and because of economies of scale, you're only going to have one or two camping sites in the city. Maybe they can be rotated if this is going to be a long-term thing, okay? So we can all have our fair share eventually, right? Um, whatever, you know what I'm saying as far as talking about yeah. equity. Uh, uh, to me, be careful about saying 500 feet or whatever, because before you know it, you're going to look at a map and there's going to be no place to put these places. Be careful <laughs> about that one. Um, the, the point is, uh, we're going to have to work through it. And, uh, if we could pass the ordinance and it's not in force at all until we work out all the mechanics, but as long as we're good on the solid fundamentals, I don't think it precludes us from passing something. And then as we work through the mechanics of trying to implement working with the mayor, we say, oh no, this isn't going to work. This isn't going to, then we tweak it, but we're doing nothing now. I do want to make sure we're all on the same page as what's proposed. Can I go to the whiteboard and just, I want to make sure I've captured kind of all the suggestions that are on the table. Tell me if we're not, if we're wrong, but um, if we're a suggestion of designate uh, specific spaces. 
for the uh, for camping. Not the best. Um, for me, another about you know X feet from President Coughlin. I think you have a PhD in astronomy, if I'm correct. That you spell spaces wrong. Yeah, that? like it's supposed to be a C. Thank you. Uh, okay, C. okay, I'm just saying, you know, PhD. <laughs> yeah. X feet from from parks. That's, that's did anyone propose that? Yeah, yeah. yeah well. Like the liquor ones <clears throat> tend to be okay. the parks, yeah. playgrounds, yeah. schools, yeah. Okay. daycares, Park schools, critical areas. Yeah, you can say you can add the list, whatever. And um, critical areas. Yeah. And then I don't think I've heard any. But time is out. It sounds like critical areas. Heard anyone she wants you to write. Okay, so I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so I had his eyes. Here is where, if the time, I'll say time is the essence. But if time is a critical thing for this thing to work, where people have to pick up a compromise, just thinking out loud, so don't, you know, oh, that's all wrong, is that at these camping, these uh, designated camping spaces, if they have to pick up their stuff, so you don't want the landlord thing or whatever, there's a place to store their stuff and they can come back to it, a, a safe place. <clears throat> See what I'm saying? So they're 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 not. You don't. It takes work to do that, and so that might give you an incentive. And I don't know everyone's. Everybody has a different story, but it, it if 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 you have to get in a routine where you got to pack up your stuff, and I'm not say six thirty in the morning. Goodness gracious, I got a a, a college age kid six thirty in the morning. No, that's it's not dark. happening. So anyway. But whatever that time model is, if it's, well, you got to clean up your campsite, which might be a good thing to clean up your campsite so it doesn't, um, but then you have a designated area. You know, I remember when I first moved here that uh, I got a, I had a locker for my bike down at the ferry terminal. I don't know if they probably still don't have that or whatever, but something like that where you put a padlock on it. You don't, the city doesn't have, you know, you have your padlock and then for whatever reason, they can't end the city can cut it off, whatever, but a safe place to put your belongings. Maybe that's a compromise where you got to pick up your stuff, put it away, and then you can pitch your pen again that, that night. That could be a compromise. I don't know. It's just yeah, one of those things that I'm just throwing out. This is about brainstorming. That's the yeah, whole point of doing the, the whiteboard. The it's not criticize someone. That's where time great is, ideas come from. Is just throw it up on I don't the understand what time as a possibility means. So time as a restriction. Um, yeah, time restriction as in these places. Um, I just look, I'm looking at other cities that you know, you want to give an example. Like that. I believe it's like, yeah, I think most it's people say they disagree. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. specifically you, long you you that, that language uh, in that order. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry, I was going one at a time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I was just going to add that there, I think at some point previously, somebody had expressed a desire to at least see what a time restriction yeah. would look like. And so that that part in this ordinance is not actually in Lakewood's ordinance, mm -hmm. that, but that language is lifted. From directly from Long Beach ordinance. Uh, although <clears throat> I should add, they they there are some areas that are off limits at all times. Here, sorry, during those times, no, strike that. Sorry, <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah. So, but they they have areas also that are off limits at all times. Is what I was trying to get. And at. Some that are mm -hmm. only that are time restricted. Like you can be at, like in a park, for example, during daylight hours, but you can't stay there overnight. Um, okay. In Portland is the one that we discussed previously at the two study sessions ago that it gives a time restriction reason. Although I did hear that they have not started enforcing them. So any other existing or clarification on existing? Well, <clears throat> we've not talked about this, but it's something another thought I had has put this into me, but like size. Mm -hmm. Like, so yeah, you, so so you can't like take a tent and then tarp it, you know, and then add a, a, a RV and that, you know, and I'm sure the fire marshal, excuse me, <clears throat> the fire marshal would love to have spaces between tents or not more than like when I, when I do a festival, I can't have more like than seven, 700 square feet. That's under um, Yeah, yeah we have, there are some cities that have those like that you can't take up more than a certain footprint. Yeah. 
um, because um, it, you know, it could get really large. It, like, you know, I think people in their minds think of like, oh, maybe a four-person tent, but you could have like a yurt. Right? <laughs> that, that, so the, this, uh, the reality is, so until recently, I used to have to hoof to Seattle, Soto, and uh, the, the street behind First Avenue, at one point in time, uh, people were building wooden structures, two-story structures on the street. Mm -hmm. So again, when you talk about structure, if if you have the, you have to, I'm not saying pick it up every day or whatever, but that would help preclude someone from, that never wants to leave and wants to just build something. But you could also have other, protectionisms that prevent it as far as space and what material and to um, go back to the ninth circuit case which kind of you know started these conversations the um, brand's path case did look at what was um, required to be permissible to survive the analysis of the court and it was um, rudimentary protection of that from the elements is all that was required and so um the, yeah, like a two-story wood, you know, structure. Uh, they were looking at whether or not you could actually have sleeping bags, and they said that you, you that was um, rudimentary protection of the elements. But so restriction on what a person can can use in this situation, um, I think, is permissible. I mean, you know, as far as like building structures, the size of them. In some cities, it doesn't. They called small to get turned. I think this covers kind of the general like all the other cities have. Yeah. Just on, under time, the majority does not want any time restrictions. This, this is not what we're agreed on. This is just the possibilities. And I, I agree with that. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. This, this is not a consensus list. This is just, I want to make sure Got it. we're starting to focus on what the possibilities are. The other thing was enforceability. Are we in agreement? It's, it's not enforceable. If there are no, the no camping ordinance is not enforceable if there are no shelters, mm -hmm. designated shelters, and no designated camping spaces. Available. It, it clarifies on this right now. That's what we can craft. We can say, for example, the next speech from Park Schools Community Centers. Is always enforced whether there's shelter space or not, but then other provisions aren't enforceable if there is not shelter space. Yeah, okay. sure. Yeah, so you yeah, could incorporate that, right. that into your definition of available shelter space. Okay. You could say or city designated camping area, even though right now we don't have one. And so, if the city wanted to increase its capacity under that definition, obviously you have. They built into the code already. I think Portland's code has that as already. They have something, I think, in there about is it just mayor designated camping area? I mean, we could craft that into the availability of shelter space. Um, and I think the 15 mile thing it, it is just too much. Um, you know, a, a designated shelter within 15 miles, getting to Port Orchard, going through Forest, who's going to do it? Where are people going to wait? It's it just a, it's got to be like closer than 15 miles. It's got to be something people can actually get to. And I'll say where the um, 15 miles came from, was that straight from Lakewood or was that based on? Yes. Yeah, and so Lakewood, I think, is addressing a specific issue where they um, they have partnered with the city of Tacoma mm -hmm. and they have sent, as a part of an ILA, um, uh, supporting efforts in Tacoma. And that's why it's like that. They, they aren't, their shelter spaces are not within their city limits, mm -hmm. they're in Tacoma. And just with our our geography here, the water and stuff, it, it almost would have to be further to just to be able to find spaces. Um, 
but I think we would at least find transportation. You know. But yeah, 15. It's a long walk. The dangerous one on a skinny bridge. <laughs> so, my question is is the city going to be um willing what what is the city going to be willing to do besides designate spaces so we've got this ordinance there's some restrictions all around it if we were to contact uh nonprofit agencies and ask them if they are interested in supervising these designated spaces for camping um all of that is going to cost money. Um, and while I wouldn't want to put any kind of a super permanent funding mechanism into an ordinance, I was intrigued with putting in a mechanism within an ordinance to kind of fill the gap for services maybe for a three year period. I don't know. It just feels like I don't have any, any faith in other than de designating spaces that, that there is gonna be money to operate those spaces. And so if we've got liability concerns, which a shelter provider would take on if they assume this role as well as the city, you know, but it would be, we'd be sharing the responsibility with this nonprofit partner, um, that's gonna cost money. And they're gonna say, no, we can't do that on top of everything else we do. And so we're gonna be left with, either a, a space that has an incredible amount of liability because we're not going to provide those shelters with the sprinklers and the, you know, all of that. I, you know, I don't have a lot of, I think there's a lot of emotion or a lot of psychological support uh, for making sure that they, we can fill the gap in services. And maybe the mayor has a plan that is going to fill those gaps. And he's got, I have an email that where Salvation Army said they would be willing to consider the operation of any emergency shelter or other kind of service in Bremerton. So we know that there is at least one nonprofit involved. I have no idea how much any of that would cost. No idea. And I, I'm hesitant to put in a funding mechanism if I have no understanding of how much it's gonna cost, but I'm also hesitant about passing an ordinance where there's no acknowledgement. Of, of that. Let's go there and then I thought I was hand up and we'll go. And, um, to your concerns about the liability issues, I I am not a, a human services expert at all, but I have done a lot of reading about it. Probably similar to when you're younger, you're some kind of an expert when you start your, the algorithm you know, some things your way. Those aren't, the things I'm talking about were not just uh, liability issues. It, it is actually, um, seems to be when those sites are often um, successes or failures. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not a failure for the city, it's a failure for the people who live there. Yeah. And so a lot of those things and like addressing them, like learning from the other municipalities and the states and things like that, um, and what needs to be in place so that the people there are safe and they have the security and the services they need um, to transition out of there. Um, are kind of what's been addressed in there, and there's certainly there's some liability issues. But I just wanted to reframe it that it's not mm -hmm. just about um, oh the city attorney is concerned about liability. It is actually about functionality, and so, yeah. that, so that it's a good place for people to go. Um, that it and positive things happen there instead of tragedy. Can it be a public health model? Can the county, out of its public health department, operate said program? You know, I have no idea. It's certainly a public health concern um, I don't know I know that that this is tipping the iceberg of yeah, know what you know I really do know that and I don't mean to take too much time with it but I just believe in services and um, I think we're all agreed that it's not going to be we're not going to be able to enforce this at all if there are inadequate shelter and then the funding 
um, you know, you and I discussed this. We can't allocate money funding in this ordinance. I just want to make that clear. Well, no, I, I mean, like, it's, it's just not the right, the, the right place to do it. I mean, the council's going to be jumping into budget decisions. So right. Mike like, would do it? No, they, uh, they acknowledged what they had already done. Yeah. But they did it. Right, so we can acknowledge. I, and I see they went through another process. Yeah, it's not in an ordinance. Yeah. Like they just mentioned it in the ordinance. It's, in the, it's in the whereas is where they acknowledge that they had already made you. that allocation. It's not um, codified in the ordinance. It's an acknowledgement of what they did. We go to Quinn because I've had his head stand up online a while. Um, Probably tired. <laughs> <laughs> but the officer works with this list and see if we got kind of majority on some of these specifics. Yeah, uh, th thank you, uh, Attorney Fennell, for kind of clarifying around that. You know, the laws are created from a policy standpoint, and usually liability is meant to incentivize good behavior, right? Like we have liability around sexual harassment because we want the employer to be really proactive and create a safe environment for people, right? So uh, thank you for clarifying that it's it's about the behavior that we want to be looking at and the law. Um, supports that behavior. I'm in full agreement with Council Member Fry. I think that anything that we do that does not have a monetary aspect behind it is going to be, for lack of a better word, cruel. Um, if, if we're not going to do it in this ordinance, then we need a commitment during the passage of this ordinance that we're going to set aside a certain amount of funds for uh, either private public partnerships or specific fund that the administration can draw upon. Um, I, I'm in complete agreement with that, which leads me to the next logical question. Do we know um, how many, right? Like the Ninth Circuit decision states that you can't have restrictions on camping unless you know you have these time place ones if there are no available beds, do we know how many beds would be needed in order to be in conformity with a, a complete ban? Let's, let's say we wanted to keep this on the books, which I, I know none of us do, but how many shelter beds are, are needed uh, from the last in time count? Does anybody have that information? Okay, honest, so I think the so I think the, qu the question was to you, you if you so know the answer. I don't know the answer, but the um, fifty-five. Yeah, I, I, it's um, <laughs> what most cities are doing is um, they establish some sort of a procedure to access um, real-time numbers, like at the time of contact, so that they know whether there are beds available um, at that moment. Right, and so it's not just a, a map between your point in time count and shelter space available, it's actually at that moment. And if there's something available um, at the time that the contact is made and the person is offered that and then they don't choose to um, avail themselves of that opportunity, then they would be in violation of the, the ordinance because um, shelter space is available and, and they're, they're not accurate. And so that's how most cities have been enforcing those types of bans. They, they create a system where officers are able to access those. So what I think might be prudent is getting at least like a median count of the last, I don't know, six months or something like that. And then talk to a nonprofit to see how, how much money would that take to create shelter breads for that number so that we actually have an understanding of how much funding we would need. Um, because I, I, I'm with you, Council Member Fry. I want to commit in this budget, giving money to creating shelter beds, right? That's like the entire point of this Ninth Circuit case is to incentivize cities, communities, states, the federal government to create shelter beds, to create housing. Um, so I think that would be, an excellent data point that we could use to move forward. Um, but but I, I would want the entire council's commitment if we pass something that does have time or place restrictions to say that, yes, this is X amount of dollars that we're gonna give in the budget. 
I can, oh, oh, yeah. I don't think you have an answer on that. Yeah. So, but Kylie, go ahead and then I'll. I was just going to make one comment too. It's like, even if we, um, we got the shelter space available, if it happened to be at that particular time that there wasn't any available, then it goes back to being unenforceable. So you can't say that we, um, we tried. And so now we have an enforceable ordinance. It's still going to be that way. It, it works both ways, I guess is what I'm saying. Of course. I, I, I just, you know, I don't want to, um, I don't want to create restrictions without also saying, yes, with our pocketbook, we also want to create beds. So, right. so I understand that, but I, I, I think we need to, to allocate some money to this, to this issue. I don't know if you want to jump in and then I have some point time count. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'm proposing that we limit debate on this matter because we now have too many questions to which we don't have the answers. We don't know how much it would cost for the SIA to, to reopen and provide emergency shelter. Um, we are none of us, well, except for Aaron, um, experts on, on homelessness um, and, and what works on it. Um, and I think that it would be a more fruitful discussion if we were talking with people who had actually made this work. And I don't know anyone like that. In the interim, I'd really like to just throw money at the Salvation Army and say, please reopen. Yes, it's an emergency. Thank you, Denise. Um, I'll bring this home. I don't think we're going to solve yeah. that tonight. Uh, I, mean, I don't think we're going to get to a ordinance to be able to vote on next week at this point. And just a really quick thing to for, to remind us all that in 2019, this council passed an ordinance allowing um, churches and I think other nonprofits to open up their parking lots to house the homeless. And to date, that has not been taken up. Is that correct? It's not correct. Okay, my bad. I mean, I know that my church had people parked. Great. Thank you. <laughs> um, so by the point in time, let me just send to Quinn and then jump in. Um, and then I get a path for us to kind of close up. Um, so by the point in time count for 2023, um, it lists that throughout the whole county, about 102 people in transitional housing, 257 in emergency shelters, and 245 um, unsheltered. And then of that, 58%. Um, Said that Bremerton was their place of residence. Um, so if that helps to have those numbers, then you're talking for Bremerton. Yeah. Then depends whether you go by population of the county or who is in Bremerton. Uh, yeah, it's complicated on how you set the definition of available shelter. Um, so sorry, Mayor. Yeah, if you want to. Well, I was going to say um, part of what all I hope to be bringing to you soon will be about um, depends on many partners you bring in. Really not much. How much are our roles going to be? It's going to be in the hands to just operate a um, 24 7, 365 day year shelter. And, um, and so we'll have, um, we're going to discuss, you know, the find use this building and lease it. Like, do I come to you and put proposals to purchase? And then how would that, where would we get the money from partnerships to do that? Um, there's, there's a model that's um, just had its salvation. So I we have a model that can use. It's, it considers everything you, and whether you knew it or, or not, a slow barrier. And they didn't screen for sex offenders or anything like that. And so um, it was what we had. And um, so that's what's, um, now how we come together with this, this next building that we have in mind. You know, I'll keep you updated on what what everybody's talking about. Um, as far as the budget, again, that's a moving a moving target. Depending on how many wraparound services do we want on, on top of it, I know I've heard that from Sean. So we've got focusing back on this specific ordinance, knowing it's one small piece of a very big picture. <laughs> um, and that we can't add in specific funding at this point, but we can't have the budget cycle and other resources. I'm gonna go down this list and just take a quick kind of um, thumbs up means, you know, uh, thumbs up means, sorry, because of that. 
want to be able to give the attorney something concrete to come back to us next study session so that we can hopefully bring this, bring this home. Um, and so knowing that, let's go through and think of if this is something you would either um, support, the thumbs up, support being um, in the next draft ordinance, because we're voting on it, just support seeing it come back to the next draft ordinance. Something you can live with, you know, you're not real gung ho about it, but you can live with it, um, or thumbs down something you'd really not like to see. Um, and if we go to the list, and that might tell us um, what things to focus on, um, come back next time. So for critical critical areas, um, again, it just should be in the X ordinance. Feet from I don't, yeah, it's critical from. areas. So this is what so critical. So the critical area already includes mm -hmm. right the buffer. Yes. So it's not 500 feet from the edge of a critical area. It's the critical area. I think the current the current um, Lakewood ordinance has it. Yeah, I think it hits the right. nail on the head on critical yeah. areas. Just what's currently in Lakewood are critical yeah. areas. All right, so seeing broad support for that. Okay, um, and then we have designating specific spaces. So I want to be clear here. In this case, um, we'd be saying this is okay to camp in when there's no sheltered space, <laughs> but Otherwise, all other public spaces are off limits. You only can go in the designated camp so, space. I write that designated spaces only. The right of ways and all that stuff. When, off limits. when no shelter. Yeah. Can I just make a comment on that? Yeah. yeah. Like I see that clarity. we have a model right now for housing homelessness, trying to find yeah. <clears throat> there could be something a little bit similar. Right, where there's somebody who knows where they're available and maybe there's one car spot at that church and maybe another place has two campsites and then maybe we take that parking lot and there's 25 campsites so you just you could manage it like that it's not just go to that dirt lot and live there it would be it would just be you know well there's no shelter bed but there's tents and do you need a tent and you know it could be managed a little bit and then since we've been talking about funding and stuff i was wondering if we could maybe i don't know if we could get done this year but could we put money into cdbg like our own you know for that process to handle so your example though, your example though is private property we don't regulate private property so people can camp on private yeah. property with permission from the yeah. owners that's not but either way i'm saying like it almost be like a reserved campsite that could possibly be managed by kids. Okay, okay. so, so either yeah. way, next. Yeah, the, 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 the designated space is only when there's no shelter. Just in principle, we work out exactly where. Great. I'm seeing thumbs up. Yep, yep, up. yep. I'm going to decide, yeah, okay. okay. Most of the support for that one as well. Where's Jennifer was here. Um, okay, then this, um, you know, controller number, I've seen 500 feet written out. So you can be adjusted. Um, what I actually suggest is park, park schools and basically um, that according to our code ever written down. Daycare center. So child care or child or, care. Yeah, child child care, schools, park, community, community centers. It's a bit more than center, but that's the area. Um, and yeah, this number could be adjusted, but let's just say in principle, if we want to enact something, um, have this, in, and this would be at all, at all times. Or whether they're shelter space or not. Critical areas would be all time. And this would be, yeah, thank you, critical areas at all time. Okay. Any questions? Looks good. This means, yeah. First, they're going to give a thumbs up for this one. I'm sideways on that one. Yeah, just be careful what you're doing on that. I, I really don't like handcuffing the administration on. on on that and again look at a map we've done similar stuff on zoning and then we figured out oh we can't build anywhere because of the, the map well just be careful i guess we're i guess the question is it seems like we could designate a place but people just can't set up on their own is that would that be it but yeah these are kind of conflicting because if you go with just you yeah. designate these spaces or you don't need the other shelter, then you don't necessarily need it. Yeah, that's true. Except that's if, true. If we don't have shelter. That's true. Right. Sure right. Sure right. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I also yeah. like to think of this 
probably the or very original camping ordinances <clears throat> were just about people traveling through and you know like like the camping didn't have a negative connotation taking the sort of the unsheltered people out of this equation and where can people go designated <laughs> spaces <laughs> so well, we didn't allow camping in parks that's well, our you, current you ordinance go, yeah you could have good yeah this is off limit all the time, and when there's no shelter space, it doesn't make sense. Okay. Okay. The small majority of comes up, so we'll keep that in there. We can work on the details next time. Time restrictions, um, no. similar to long view. I'm gonna I'm gonna like I'm gonna move down. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So I'm actually gonna skip you too. You can abstain, but uh, most of them aren't full. And then regulations on manner and structure. Um, Gonna the whole craft, craft ordinance from uh, Lakewood, but is that already in there or is that not any yeah, yeah, major no. restrictions? That was okay. found in other ones. It was, um, I think Portland had the most uh, well, detailed, yeah, yeah, Portland and Kent had the most detailed banner, and it has to do with um, what does it mean? Like, you know, we kind of everyone's in their mind when you're talking about this, you have an idea in your head about what camping looks like, and then you know what it doesn't like, what's too far, and they. Those places have tried to define that mm -hmm. where it's something beyond what a person needs to be, you know, sheltered, I guess. Um, meaning, like, they have, like, there's a difference between a circus tent and uh, a personal tent, right? And somewhere kind of just define that. Look, in my opinion, you either have, and I'm not an advocate for the time one. I, I remember in the beginning I said it wasn't. So you either have one or the other. Because by definition, if you have the time one, that's going to limit your structure, right? But mm -hmm. if you don't have the time, then there's no limit on your structure. So you need to have an ordinance that addresses manner and structure. So that you yeah. don't build a yeah. condo. <laughs> Could it be a space limitation? Sure. Those are the, the space limitations of like what the footprint can be mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Or, um, you know, Anderson windows. <laughs> Yeah, certainly. It's on a full gray continuum between <laughs> the car. It, it sounds like we need a little bit more information on what this could look like. So, mm -hmm. how about this time it's on a speech to get you some more examples of banner and mm -hmm. uh, restrictions? Um, and it would kind of put those in as things to consider. In principle, someone, say, building a whole like 12 by 10 shed. Right. I think we could, I'm just going to speak, let me know if I'm wrong, agree that it's not something we want to permit. Like that to me would be the way extreme of that. Clearly, not okay to build that on a sidewalk. Um, They're temporary, right? But then, obviously, yeah, no, uh, yeah. Okay, so let's put that as um. I think we definitely have, uh, we definitely have to look at that. Look just, at yeah, this yeah, is, um, see, I mean, so this, this is to, to bring back to us to possibly refine. Yeah, I know yeah. Portland had the one about. Um, okay, so what's the next one? Um, and then it sounds like there's some questions on the definition of available shelter, when we need it, when we don't, and then kind of like distance accessibility. This is sure. I guess the question is: Is this something we need, we need in our ordinance, or yes. is this, okay, yeah, so we, we need, need this no matter what. Okay, um, so this is the layer we need to um, run down. It can incorporate mm -hmm. the designated space. Yeah, as for well. camping. Yeah, it could say that. You know, available shelter means, you know, kind of like what the definition you saw, or designated camping area, or city designated camping areas, or something like that. Um, so we can work on that. Okay. So what I'm hearing is we're not going to do with this next, we're not going to revisit this next week. We want this back on the study session. session. Yeah. Mike is also going to Okay. You, so it you don't get to miss it. Me, yeah, let me oh, sum up and then take a comment. All right, so we have homework on liquid critical areas, designated spaces, next study session, trying to define exactly what those spaces are, X feet from Y places, put some sample language in there, and we can discuss specific feet, specific places, and then um, sample language or definition of structure and available shelter. Okay. So, a question. So, on designated so spaces everybody. only, is that do you want me to write the code that talks about those, or do you want me to actually look at a map and find spaces? I think just yeah, yeah, just no. put it in the code as, as yeah, and then we'll have to 
yeah. the administration can do. So, right. I mean, actually, I suggest you work with Andrea on that whole thing of whether it's realistic or not, whatever feet from whatever. Oh, no. So there's there's the foot restriction on number three. I'm talking about number two. Oh, you're suggesting that. I just want to make, okay. when I heard the discussion earlier, what I heard is writing in there that, um, I mean, basically having, like Portland's code says, um, no person shall use city property for housing or camping except where the city property is explicitly designated by the city for use for housing, camping, or an alternative sheltering purposes. There, there you go. go. Um, yeah. So, but you don't want me to like find those places no. if I, okay, good. Yeah. No, that's that's a bigger situation. Or that will trigger all the NIMBY. They must, well, right. they must reference where those places are find in another document or another. Well, right. It's just okay. going to be that those aren't yeah. that, 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 great. It's, it, it's the placeholder in the code. Great. Okay. Let's put that. <laughs> <laughs> smoke break. Okay. I do. Um, um, all right. So we are, the homework. Our yeah. other homework, are, I think, mm -hmm. are really important homework. And this is something that, if need be, we should talk about next week at the briefing is how much will it cost and what, pers what can make it happen that the Salvation Army can open back up? Like, the, yeah, yeah, services that they are separate discussion. Yeah, I, I'm fortunate as it is from no, specific no, no, no. You're going to yeah. do that? That's well, your I'm already, I'm already doing it. Yeah, the answer okay. depends. <laughs> All right. so, yeah. so it really is. It's like how many, rep, how many services do we need on site? And so it's not that easy to talk about the shelter and so we know exactly what we want from the shelter. Okay. From my perspective, oh, my I sorry. love wraparound. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry, Quinn. Yeah. yeah, no problem. Sorry, it's it's hard for me to see the board on here. Uh, yeah. We're, did we agree that parks should be off the table? So I think that's something we can narrow in on. But yeah, right now is what I wrote down was parks, schools, community centers, and child care. I, so. I, think there's, I think there's consensus on on parks, and then just the the feet limit on the others like the schools the daycares things like that but separate, right? I, I, th I thought i felt like a consensus that everybody was okay with saying parks should be off limits all the time unless i'm misunderstood i think that's correct yeah um, okay so so uh the proposal is attorneys will bring back to us with language that says i don't know throwing i think right. we'll write the word x, x feet from park schools community centers child care facilities at all times, they're off limits. I, I, I think there's a separate consensus of no okay. parks are off limits. And then here are some structures that we're thinking there might be uh, a foot restriction against. That's uh, that's kind of what I'm saying. Mean. Okay, so let me rephrase that. And sorry, you can't see the whiteboard. No worries. Well, I'm hearing, we'll see if we have consensus. Um, is at all times off limits, it's critical areas and parks. That, yeah. That's what I was hearing, yeah. Okay. And then we would then also consider a separate X feet from yeah. school community centers, child care facilities, public language. Thank okay. you. Appreciate I'll it. That change. Okay, good specificity. Thank you. All right. Any final comments? Yeah. yeah. The only point I want to make is that there are shelter costs and there are service costs. And what I'm talking about right now, at least for the camping space or overnight shelter is shelter. It's it's the camp, it's operating housing, not necessarily wraparound services at a site where we're gonna have campsites. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll leave it up to how President Coughlin, how far you wanna go, but I'm trying to get you a budget right now. And, and since we're, this isn't, we're in, you know, new ground here, new territory. Um, and on, I totally respect your question. I wasn't, wasn't being flippant by said, mm -hmm. it depends. It's um, just, you know, there's, I think there's going to be agencies contributing to this, this effort. And part of it's going to be they're offering services. Part of it's going to be for the housing. So it's not going to all just be a separate um, addiction addiction treatments. There's going to be other things. And also part of it's going to be housing solutions where we might be able to trans transition people into other housing, make more available if we 
just do a shelter, um, you know, we realize there's there's going to be challenges with capacity. We have other things that we can help people, and I heard that was a, that was a strong push for that. We can actually transition into other housing, make more availability in our shelter. So that's what I'm looking for, and I think I think we've got something for you. Um, I just let me go get you something. You know, I'm I'm as one to go as fast as you. So free to go along in your mayor's report, Beth. Yeah, as soon as I, as soon as I can, I will. Uh, Eric, and then let's wrap this up and get to our next, uh, last item. Okay, so this has all been great. I'm glad we're moving forward. I think it was well worth the time. There's another component I mentioned when I first spoke up, and that is coordinating with the county and the other cities. I'll let the mayor work on coordinating with the cities because uh, he can just pick up the phone and call each of the mayors. Years ago, we met with Kristen Jewell in the city council, and I have mixed reactions on how fruitful that was. Earlier in June, the county hired Carl Borg as the new coordinator of uh, whatever it is. Uh, housing and homeless uh, and homeless. Uh, there you go, new housing and homeless division. Last time I checked on uh, my property tax statement, not that I checked every day, but I pay Kitsap County property taxes. I'd like to see what I'm getting for my money. I'd like to reach out to Mr. Borg. I'm asking you, Council President, to do so and find out how we can coordinate our services, how we can work together on this instead of having all these silos. And I know there's things going on that I'm not aware of, and I'm not a homeless expert. I get it, but I'd like to see Mr. Borg. So already Already, um, when he got in the position, sent him a note congratulating him and um, saying we'd love to see a council. I don't think I we're back on that one. I'll double check, but reach out again. Um, and then, yeah, mayor as well. Yeah, yeah I'm already working with the county. They they are my our, our closest partners, okay. and so um, and the one tenth of one percent is being discussed. And so, as a funding source, right? I want you to know that. Um, and you know, I have a meeting scheduled with them. It's a big move when you start shifting and prioritizing this way um, to this this crisis. Where that's what I'm working on right now. And if you'll just let me do my part um, to get you a shelter um, and the services that we're talking about, um, you know, I'll, you're going to get. An, I'm going to propose something to you. I'm shifting to early and often. It's, it's fantastic. So that's right. Um, all right, so we'll wrap it up there. So what I'll do um, for both public record and Quinn uh, is translate my handwriting to writing so we can put it in the packet um, and we'll get that sent out. Um, then I'll make sure to reach out again to Mr. Borg um, to come talk with us. All right, thank you all for yet another difficult one. Only a couple items, but very meaty At ones. At the three hour yeah. mark. And yeah. <laughs> Well, we're well paid. I'm, I'm, we, I'm, we can I'm, pummel, Chris. There's just... We can pummel. We got the last one here, which I've already punted on a bunch. So I'd like to make a I little progress on going down to but, my car yeah. where there is food in the glove box. You're going to get that food. All right. How about okay. we reconvene at 810? Seven minutes? Okay. It's, okay. Right. Is that different than the clock? 810? 810. Yeah. Okay.